Hey everybody, my name is John Wright. I'm the Director of Public Relations for Hardin County Schools and we're glad that you could with, uh, join us uh, at this noon hour today on Monday, October 26, 2020. And uh, we are at HCEC TV Studios. I'm hanging out with Carlina Sharon. She's our Director of uh, Early Childhood Instruction. And so we, Carlina and I, are, we're more than six feet apart. So we're going to remove our mask uh, because we, are, we'll, we fall into that social distancing guideline. So uh, we're going to do that. And we wanted to do this, uh, Carlina, just to make sure that everyone knows that uh, our preschool department is not only exists, but our preschool department is the best in Kentucky. Uh, we're biased, but we believe it's the best in the state. We do. We have absolutely, I think, the best group of teachers and the best group of instructional assistants and um, feel very fortunate that we have a board of education that truly understands that if we want to make a difference, a lifelong difference in the success of children, then we start when they're young because the primary time that a child learns and their brain is the most active and most ready for learning is birth to five years old. Mm -hmm. So that's where we should, you know, as a state, really be investing our money and our efforts to offer universal preschool for all four-year-olds so we can get all four-year-olds to be uh, ready and as successful as possible to start kindergarten. But Carlina, you've, you've talked about, I've heard you many times talk about, uh, you know, preschool starts at three and four. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when we have students in preschool. But really learning starts in the wound. Oh, uh, so, mm -hmm. so talk about how, how critical those, those not only before birth years are and then even just right after birth, how important sure. those years are. Uh, it's, they're so important. You know, if there's one thing I would say to all new families, new parents, is read to your children. Read when you are pregnant, read when you have the baby, read, read every single night to your children. That's probably one of the best things that families can do for their children because not only are you developing the love of literacy with children, but you're also developing their vocabulary. And there's such a huge difference in um, children who enter school who have been read to and their vocabulary is uh, much expanded than children who enter school that have not been read to. And there's a lot of studies out there about that. Mm -hmm. um, so the one, one of the best things you can do is read to your children. And if you only have a couple books at home, read those books over and over because you know children love to hear the same book over and over. They love to hear it, the book to the point that they can retell you the story because then they even jump into um, thinking they're reading on their own, which is a pre-literacy skill, which is you know, awesome for children. So, you know, that birth, being pregnant, all the way up to, you know, five or six years old is such a huge, you know, crucial time because the brain is developing. So all the opportunities and experiences that you are giving your children um, when they're very intentional, it just helps your child be more ready to be able to um, be very successful when they start school. Um. Talk about this, the, the process of how we get into preschool. I know we'll probably be asked that question, so maybe we can can eliminate that big one there at the, here, here at the beginning. So sure. if, I'm, if I'm interested in preschool and I want my children in preschool, what's the, what's the first thing I do? Sure. So we try to make the process as simple as possible. We are a, um, we have state funded preschool in, out in Hardin County schools. So three year old children can um, attend preschool once we determine they're eligible. Four year old children can also attend school once we determine they're eligible. And we look at the birth date of August the first. So if you were three on or before August the first, you would be considered a three-year-old, same for four-year-olds. Um, so it's as simple as completing an application. Okay. We have an application that we have actually created online, so you can do it from the comfort of your recliner. You can do it from the comfort of your front seat in your car. Um, you can do it in from quarantine. A, yes, you can do it in quarantine. <laughs> you can do it anywhere. Um, you can do it. You know, you can use your telephone. You can use a tablet. You can use a computer. But you simply go to um, tiny URL. Um, uh, tiny.url backslash um, apply for HCS, HCS preschool. And we'll add that on the link somewhere. Um, if, you, if you follow Hardin County Schools preschool Facebook page, I put it on there all the time because I truly want families to realize how easy it is. Once you fill out that application, it automatically is submitted to our office and it automatically sends you a copy also. 
So, and then that, that application generates the next steps. So once we get the application, um, our office will start looking to see if, if you are a four, have a four-year-old child, do you qualify by income? That is one area that four-year-old children can qualify under and is income, and that's the first thing we look at. And if we think that, yes, you would qualify under income, then we will get in contact with you to collect the evidence that we would need for our, for our files to show that you did qualify. If you do not qualify by income, then we will look at what kinds of concerns that you might have because um, in um, Kentucky state funded preschool, three and four year olds also qualify with an identified disability or a developmental delay. And that may be speech, it could be motor, it could be uh, social, it could be behavior, it could be a number of things that once we um, screen and evaluate, we see that your child maybe just needs a little more catching up to be able to be on grade level with their peers. And it's certainly nothing to be concerned about or embarrassed about or worry about. The best thing you can do right now would be to get your child into preschool if you do have those concerns because it gives them an opportunity to learn right alongside peers and get caught up and improve those areas before they ever start K-12. Right now in Hardin County Schools, there are two methods of instruction, delivery. Mm -hmm. There's on the Online Learning Academy, of course, in-person, face-to-face instruction two days a week, uh, we can K through 12. Talk about how preschool is handling, uh, tackling the pandemic, and how we're delivering quality instruction, and just kind of ease people's worries about, is it okay to send my child to preschool even in the middle of all this? Sure. Um, so we are we are very very similar to K twelve. Um, our district, I think, um, under the leadership of our superintendent, has done an excellent job of making sure that we're doing everything possible um, to use every safety method we have um, to keep our children safe because they are our children, all of them, preschool through twelfth grade. We love your children the way you love your children. So we certainly want them to be safe, and we want to use all of those um, safety procedures and that's what we follow with in-person preschool. We're very, very careful with everything that we do. Um, we, we, in the state of Kentucky, we do not have to wear masks in preschool. Um, we did not make it a requirement for preschool. We do highly encourage masks and our children are doing a fabulous job of wearing masks. Um, we are certainly getting outside um, at least two or three times a day. We are trying to keep um, preschool as um, what you're used to looking at in preschool as we possibly can um, while using every safety measure because preschool is very social. And I will tell you the one thing that um, for people who are worried about, I don't know that I want to send them to school because they aren't going to be able to be social and that's so important. They are social. They are truly social. And if you just ever think of yourself at a restaurant, this is how I kind of explain this. Um, if you ever think of yourself at a restaurant with your children and your child is much more interested in talking to the little child over there in the corner, they don't yell out, they don't scream, they're not talking, but they are very social with that child over there who has made eye contact with them. And they're playing right. and they're you know, mimicking what each other, what they're doing, and we see that all the time. Now our children are certainly talking and we're going to centers and um, it's a very normal day and they're loving school. So we, we have really um, tried to make sure that our schedule allows them as much outside time as possible. They have social time. We're learning a lot. Um, and then we also have the component of um, online learning. We have two and a half um, teachers dedicated to our online learning preschool children. Um, and while I do not pretend that it is easy to offer online learning instruction and make it developmentally appropriate, that is not an easy task for our preschool teachers, our kindergarten teachers, our first grade teachers. They are doing a fabulous job of making every effort to make sure that the instruction is developmentally appropriate. Because we have harped for years about, I mean, there's a lot of research out there about, you know, young children all the way up through birth, first grade should not be on 
computers all the time. Mm -hmm. You don't want to see them on apps. You don't want to see them, you know, constantly uh, with some kind of game. Um, there's actually a quote out there that I love that says, there's no app to replace your lap. And that is yes. so true. For them to sit in your lap and for you to read to them is one of the best things you can do. But because of distance learning, we certainly have had to increase some of the time that they are online, even if they're doing a Google Meet with us. Um, but we have worked really hard in Hardin County, and I really think within the state, to make preschool and kindergarten schedules uh, reflect developmentally appropriate practices. So they may be online with us for a live Google Meet, and then we're gonna encourage you to go do some gross motor activities with them. Then they may jump back online to do small group instruction, and then we're gonna encourage you to give them some rest time and some quiet time. Because those are things all of our young children need in a, in a normal day. Talk, talking about the day, um, Ms. Benningfield has asked about preschool hours, and of course they, um, to talk about how, how that how that is working with hours for preschool. Sure, and that's a great question. And I'm actually really glad that somebody asked that today because we did make a change in our um, daily instruction this year. Um, we used to do we used to offer half days, so you would go um, 7:15 to 10:45, and then a new group would come in at 10:45 and stay till 2:15. And last year we piloted um, a new system instead of going half days we go two days a week so you come at 715 you stay till until 215 that would be for all schools with the exception of Lakewood Elementary School who runs a, starts a little later and ends a little later we mirror the school time so um, we have a the children who come two days a week would come um, from 7.15 to 2.15, two days a week. And Ms. Morgan, our superintendent, and I really talked um, very thoughtfully prior to the start of school um, with AB schedules, because an AB schedule for preschool would have meant that children would have only mm. come one day a week. Mm. And we did not want that. So instead, we reduce the numbers of children we can have in our classroom um, and to fit the exact number we could have that we could still be very socially distanced and safe. And we uh, were able to continue coming twice a week. So we have a couple, we have actually have a couple different configurations in Hardin County. We have some classrooms that go four days a week. And then we have some classrooms that they would go two days a week, and this year it would be Monday and Thursday, or your child might be on a Tuesday, Friday schedule. We do not go to school on Wednesdays, and the reason for that is um, in K-12, when you, when, as a, from the adult side, you have um, a planning period, time that you can um, do lesson planning and call families and get things prepared. Um, for preschool, we do not have a planning period during the day. So the uh, one day that we do not have children come to school, that is our planning period. That is the day that we would do home visits, which this year are virtual. They're more of a Facebook um, or a Google Meet setting, but typically they are, we go out into their home and, and meet with them. Um, that's the time we do parent-teacher conferences. That's the time we do lesson planning for the week. Uh, we do uh, monitoring of our um, IEPs. We do a lot of work during that time. Um, I laugh because anybody that doesn't know a lot about preschool in the school setting, sometimes will say, now on that day off, and I always say, that's not a day off. <laughs> Follow one of our preschool teachers right. around because it's not a day off. Right. Um, they are taking care of so many things. And typically in a normal year, that's also the day that we would offer family training. Mm -hmm. We have um, a variety of activities we have uh, during family training. Here we are on the October 26th. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, uh, a fourth of the school year is gone but it's still not too late to get into oh, preschool. It's never too late to never. get into preschool. Mm -hmm. No, it is never too late. I, I, we, we enroll children um, that are eligible in May, wow. and we don't get it. And we get out of school typically around the middle mm. of May. It's never too late to start preschool. We have children start preschool 
at all times. Um, there's actually a birth to three-year-old program called First Steps, um, and it would be a, pro a, a program that, you know, if you have a, a birth to three-year-old child that you have uh, some slight concerns about, I would certainly encourage you to get in touch with the um, uh, First Steps program because they're a wonderful program, but they transition to preschool. There's actually a, a law out there that says that um, if you are in the First Steps program and you're getting ready to exit that program as a three-year-old, then your local school district has to determine if that child qualifies for preschool. And there should be no um, break in service. So if, you know, Mr. Wright was our three-year-old and his birthday is in October, then our school system needs to determine by, by his birthday that he is eligible to go to preschool or he is not eligible. So on his birthday, he can start school. So since birthdays are all over the page, mm -hmm. you know, you can see that we have lots of children that will transition to preschool at different times, all different times during the year. Um, even if you do not have concerns about your children, I, will, I highly encourage you to apply for preschool. And I tell all families that because I don't think there's a lot of opportunities as a uh, child, uh, three and four year old child, for you to go somewhere and be able to have your child screened and then to sit with an adult who is somewhat of an expert in that age developmentally developmental area um, to share information. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if you apply for preschool and, you know, our team of experts tells you that we don't see anything that would indicate that um, there's even a slight concern about um, the way that they are developing or you know on track to being successful, um, we're still gonna give you information. So you know we've had a, a number of parents that have applied for preschool and with the conversation we've had at the end, um, they didn't necessarily qualify for preschool, but they got some information that was really important um, for them to continue working with their children the way that they have. And that Brigant's test is a, is a test that we uh, perform and we have to perform mm -hmm. uh, per state law, but we perform that on every kindergartner just to see where they are and, and as you said, those, those preschoolers that go into to kindergarten, they, they, do, they, they do very well mm -hmm, on that do. Brigant's test. Mm -hmm. They do, and I look closely at that. Um, we actually have been a, um, and the Brigant's, um, it's called Brigant's Kindergarten Screener. Every kindergartner, um, and you have to be five, on or before August the 1st to be able to attend kindergarten. You do not have to attend kindergarten when you are five. You have to start school by the time you're six, but you don't have to start school when you're five. But a lot of families choose to start their children when they're five, and every kindergartner is given that Brigant screener. Um, and then the state issues um, the data uh, for statewide on how children uh, did on that screener. And, um, you know, like with every assessment, there are certainly some things on the assessment that I, I, I don't know that, um, I think at the beginning of kindergarten, it would be what we would necessarily want to see. However, they are kindergarten standards. Um, and our kindergartners um, typically perform around 50%. So about 50% of our children that are coming to kindergarten are ready for kindergarten based on the state definition. Now that does not mean that your child would not, will not be successful in kindergarten. If you do have a uh, child who's taken that screener and they um, did not uh, screen ready, you will be amazed at what they learn by the end of the year with their kindergarten teacher and their instructional assistant because they work you know, magic in those classrooms with children. Uh, but we typically have hovered around the 50% mark. So um, we put a lot of effort um, into trying to share out readiness activities that families can do with their children. Um, to help them be better prepared for that assessment. Uh, this year we started a Facebook page um, called HC, HCS Kindergarten Readiness, mm -hmm. and we shared a lot of information with families on um, the types of activities that would you know, um, help them be ready for that screener. Uh, so, you know, we'll continue to do that. Again, I'll go back to the very best thing you can do to help your child be ready for kindergarten and to be successful is start reading to them now, wherever they are, whether they are, you know, two months old, two days two, old, two days old. <laughs> 
in a two weeks you're going to have the baby, <laughs> um, whether they're three, whether they're four or five, you start reading right now. You know, spend a little bit of time every night. Just, you know, stick it in your schedule like you, you know, we're going to have dinner. Then we're going to, you know, take a bath. Then we're going to read a book. Then we're going to go to bed where it just becomes an every night routine. It won't take very long before your child starts saying to you, hey, we forgot our book. We forgot our book. You know, and that's the word you want to hear because you want your children to enjoy, you know, um, hearing you read with them, hearing you read them telling you story through the pictures, you know, and for a lot of families, um, if your child, if you don't have a lot of books available, um, there's actually a lot of opportunities out there because we have, you know, one of the best library systems. I think the Hardin County Public Library is absolutely fabulous and they have a lot of um, activities for young children uh, to be able to develop that love of, of reading. But we have also established a lot of little free libraries around our community. Community. Yes. We have one at Creekside, Lakewood, Cecilia Valley. There are two or three at Freeman Lake. There's one at North Park, Meadowview, James T. Alton, Rineyville, where you can pull up to those little free libraries at any time during the day or night and take a book. You know, when you get finished with the book, just stick the book back in there and take another book. You know, because it's kind of a sharing library that makes it available at all times, any time that would be convenient for you. And, you know, establish a routine with your family, with your child, where, you know, you pick a day of the week that you're going to go down there and you're going to, you know, pick a, let your child pick a book out of there and then you're going to take it back. And, you know, that, that's a great way to encourage your child to, to love reading. But, you know, you can read the newspaper. You know, if you're a dad and you love reading the sports section, let your put your child on your lap and read the sports section with them. There's a lot of things we read as adults that are not um, books, you know, once we become adults. So, you, you know, show your child that you're reading those kinds of things and let your child help you with that because some children love, they have a passion for sports and they'll read all day long if it has to do with sports. So find their passion and develop it. A couple of questions is what about three-year-olds for pre-K uh, and then do you do early screenings to test a four-year-old for kindergarten? So we uh, so let's start with the first one. Okay. So three year olds for pre K, three year olds do qualify for preschool, and we said at the beginning of the program that um, they qualify with an um, a developmental delay, and that's not a bad word. That's not anything to think about right. in a bad way. That just simply means that there is an area that could be a slight concern right now that we want to try to improve before they actually get into school. Um, I will say that I think that there are some some uh, um, thought out there that if you have an IEP, an individualized education plan, that that maybe is something you don't want your child to have. But that is so far from the truth. You know, you want your child as a parent to have anything they need to help them, that child be successful. And an individualized education plan is simply, this is an area that we want to be able to offer some specialized instruction in to help this child get, be, get to be on grade level with their peers. And that's what we would all want. Uh, who cares what it's called? You just want your child to have that. If your child needed a certain type of medicine, it would make them feel better. You're going to find a way to give them that. And this is just like medicine for their education system. You know, so if they need that, that's what you want to give them. Um, preschool kind of operates like that. So if we see an area that we that uh, there's some concern, um, we want to be able to give them that specialized instruction. And that could be speech motor, behavior, social. If you have a child that you have behavior concerns with, that's something that we can certainly talk about and we can look and see if that would you know, help your child be eligible for the preschool program. Or if you have a child that won't speak to anybody, that's another area. So it can be something as simple as, as, as those kinds of things that we just work on. Um, so three-year-olds, they do certainly qualify and all year long. So if you have a three-year-old right now that you think, mm, I don't really know that they do, still apply for preschool and let's talk about it because we can certainly see some things that we can share with you. And if we're just sharing that everything looks developmentally appropriate and you're doing, a, you know, everything is rolling right along, then we'll share that too. Um, I will say, you know, we check vision and hearing 
um, also in preschool when we're evaluating children and um, we have been um, we've had several families over the years that have been thrilled because that's the first time they realized that there was an issue with vision or a hearing um, and then they've gone on to be able to so there's a lot of whole picture of the child that we look at that will give you information so three-year-olds certainly what about if my child if I think my child is ready for kindergarten at four years old yes what do they so if your child does not meet the age requirement from the state and that is to be five years old on or before August the 1st then our plan for early entry into kindergarten is your child would turn would turn five after August 1st but before October the 1st you can ask the school district to test your child early entry and we'll test them to see if they would qualify for um, starting kindergarten without meeting the age requirement the reason we chose October the 1st as our cutoff date is prior to three or four years ago October 1st was the date your child had to be five by October 1st to start kindergarten they moved that date up it's actually probably been more like six years time really flies when you're mm. having fun <laughs> sure. um, probably been, been about six years but they moved that date up and now statewide you have to be five by on or before August the 1st so if they fall August 2nd to October 1st and you think my child's ready you know they are they know a lot of their alphabet, they know a lot of their sounds, they've got a great vocabulary, they know their numbers, they're mature, they can follow directions, they can um, you know, at uh, sit and be um, at attent attentive to a task for a period of time. If you can really look at your child and say, you know, I, I think they know all of that, then all you have to do is ask your local school um, after December, we, use, we have the applications in our local schools after winter break. Um, tell them you want one of those, fill it out, it'll come to my office, and then we start screening around April, May. Um, and we will bring your child in, we will screen your child using two different assessments um, to be able to determine whether your child would be uh, able to go to kindergarten. And there is, uh, on, our, on the HCS website, under the Parents tab, that's at the very top, there is a, a, uh, several materials on there called Kindergarten Readiness Information. And that was a kind of a uh, collaboration that our school district and the Elizabethtown Independent Schools uh, came with a couple, come up with a couple of years ago. Because look, kids are kids, and we really don't care where they go to school. We just want them to get their educational, um, you know, we want them to get their educational foundation. And so we collaborated with them. And, and that information is on our website. I believe it's on the Elizabethtown uh, Independent Schools website as well. So just check that out as well. Carlina, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, it's obviously you, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Carlina, and I, I'm saying this because as a friend of Carlina's, not just as a co-worker, but she, she is, she's the best. And uh, our preschool department is the best because of her passion and because of her drive. And, uh, but like Carlina said, our superintendent, our board of education, our teachers, our staff really feels as passionate as she does about, uh, about what early childhood means, early childhood education means for our kids. So uh, again, Carlina, how, if I need to get in touch with you, how do I do that? Uh, you about. can call our office. Our office telephone number is 270-769-8911. You will speak to Jill Monday. She is fabulous at helping families and she'll be glad to you know, answer your questions, get your question to me. If she can't answer it, we're all there to answer questions. I mean, if there is one thing that I would say, I would encourage you to do is if you have a three or four year old child, apply for preschool. If you have a three or four year old nephew, cousin, next door neighbor, tell them about preschool. Um, and it doesn't matter what system you're in. You know, um, Elizabethtown Independent has preschool. We have preschool. We have Head Start in our community. Mr. Wright is um, so correct in what he is saying about um, it doesn't, it's more important that we get the services to all three and four year old children than where they actually are going to get those services. Because we want all of our um, children to be able to have the best start ever. Every single one of these children in Hardin County, we want, we want them to have that. That makes us a better community. It helps our children be more successful. We all want better for our children than we've had for ourselves. 
And I think the way that we do that is to be able to offer them every opportunity to learn and grow and be successful. So when they come out of school, they know exactly what they want, whatever road they take, they find success on that road. Again, thank you, and uh, we'll see you on down the road. Thank you for watching today.